In general, we're taught it's a good thing to be happy. Who doesn't want to be happy? But the pursuit of happiness has long been the central theme of improving our quality of life. But can happiness be a negative thing? It may surprise you to know that some individuals experience something called cheerophobia, which leads these people to avoid fun and joyful situations. So today, I'm going to define what cheerophobia is and explain why do people suffer from it. I'm going to outline the five symptoms of cheerophobia. I'm going to talk about two tests you can use to see if you have cheerophobia, and I'm going to provide you with ways to overcome it. So let me get right into it. What is cheerophobia? Well, this is an aversion to or fear of happiness. It's not currently recognized as a clinical disorder under the DSM-5, which is a diagnostic and statistical manual of uh, mental disorders, but because it happens quite a bit, it's worth noting. So why would people fear happiness? Well, this has to do with their belief systems. So one belief is being happy makes it more likely that bad things will happen to you. So have you ever had the feeling that when things are going really well, that something bad must be about to happen? Perhaps you've heard the popular saying, waiting for the other shoe to drop. Well, similarly, there's a tendency for some people to fear having any emotion because they fear that they will lose control over their emotions or they won't be able to manage their reactions to those emotions. Another potential explanation is that inv individuals may be adverse to happiness because they fear the potentially devastating loss of this happiness more than they, they value the initial attainment of happiness. So in other words, they fear the crash after being on a high that comes with happiness. So to avoid the crash, they avoid the high. Another belief system is being happy makes you a worse person. People may fear happiness because they would feel guilty if they were to attain, attain it because individuals may feel like morally bad people because they know other people are suffering. Another belief system is expressing happiness is bad for you and others. There's the belief among some individuals and cultures that expressing happiness should also be avoided because of its potentially negative consequences for both the individual and for those around them. Similarly, some individuals are often hesitant about pursuing or demonstrating happiness or success because of the belief in the evil eye. The idea that visible success can lead to envy or suspicion from others leading to the ultimate misfortune and unhappiness of the individual. Another belief is pursuing happiness is bad for you and for others because it's been argued that the narrow pursuit of happiness is predominantly centered on the self, which may lead uh, to people acting more selfishly, leading to detrimental effects on others, including the passive harm of others through neglect. Again, these are just the belief systems. So let me talk about the five symptoms of cheerophobia. So of the cognitive symptoms, it's believing that feeling happy makes you a bad person, believing that being happy will lead to something bad happening, believing that you should not express happiness in case it upsets others. Behavioral symptoms is avoidance of joyful social gatherings, rejecting relationships or life opportunities that may bring happiness and success. So do you have cheerophobia? So let me go over two tests. One is the fear of happiness scale. So. Um, this is to basically invest, uh, investigate the general belief that experiencing happiness, particularly to excess, may be perceived to result in adverse consequences. So I'm going to give you um, a scale ranging from one, which is strongly disagreed, to seven, which is strongly agreed, with a total score ranging from five to 35, and higher scores indicate a greater fear of happiness. So take this little test with me. It's only a few statements and I want you to rate it on a scale of one to seven. One is, I prefer not to be too joyful because usually joy is followed by sadness. Another is, I believe the more cheerful and happy I am, the more I should expect bad things to occur in my life. Another is, disasters often follow good fortune. Another is, having lots of joy and fun causes bad things to happen, and excessive joy has some bad consequences. Another scale, this is another fear of happiness scale, this is basically a scale that actually is five point scale. It goes from ranging from zero, meaning not at all like me, to let's say to a, let's say a four, extremely like me, with the total score ranging from zero to 36. So again, higher scores indicate a greater fear of happiness. 
So here's the following statements I want you to rate for yourself. I am frightened to let myself become too happy. Another is I find it difficult to trust positive feelings. Another is good feelings never last. Another is I feel I don't deserve to be happy. Another is feeling good makes me feel uncomfortable. Another is I don't let myself get too excited about positive things or achievements. When you are happy, you can never be sure that something will not hit you out of the blue. I worry that if I feel good, something bad will happen. If you feel good, you let your guard down. So how to overcome cheerophobia? Here's some treatment options. One is cognitive behavioral therapy. This is highly effective treatment for any kind of anxiety disorders. And CBT helps individuals identify unhealthy, unhelpful thinking patterns that may be influencing your behavior or mood. A particularly effective approach is called exposure therapy. This helps an individual to deliberately confront their fears rather than avoid them by direct and repeated exposure. So as an individual repeatedly confronts their fear, their anxiety toward that fear is likely to reduce. So for uh, example, in the case of cheerophobia, gradual exposure to joy evoking emotions help to lessen the anxiety towards that happiness. Another is mindfulness. So basically through, let's say, meditation techniques, it aims to build a continued awareness of the present moment throughout daily life. So keep in mind that it's really important to be cognizant of what is going through your mind when you're trying to interpret various kinds of situations. Now, other kinds of techniques could be, let's say, uh, relaxation techniques, journaling, and of course, physical exercise. These are meant to be on a more surface level, but to do more deeper dive, it might require some therapy. And sometimes we need a little bit of help to achieve this. We can do what we can on our own, but where therapy helps is when we have a blind spot or when we're not aware of things, that's where a third party can be really helpful. So, you know, regardless of what your belief systems are, we all deserve to live a happy and joyful life. And we should all be satisfied and filled with experiences that bring us meaning, purpose, and success. So let's not allow fears to seize and block us from life's various and wonderful opportunities. I hope you've learned something from this video. And if so, please give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment below of what resonated with you. I also have another video I want you to watch. It's called Fear of Success. And if you've not subscribed to the channel, please do so. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please comment below. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, everyone. Take care and remember to keep your mental game on.